Hey everybody, this is Tom Lang with Warchan TV, and if you're looking forward to spring practice, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Warchan TV is the best in the business when it comes to Florida State athletics coverage, and Florida State football is about to get going this spring. That's what this video is about today. Our own Jeff Cameron from the Jeff Cameron Show weekdays at 1 o'clock right here on Warchan TV talks to our managing editor Ira Chaffel about what they're looking forward to in spring and also a little bit of basketball talk sprinkled in towards the end. Here's Jeff and Ira. Okay, so we had a little peek behind the curtain for everybody out there. Our meeting today, today as a staff for Warchan, we were talking about how excited we are for coverage and all the things we're going to do for the spring game. What are you most excited about for the spring game? You know, I guess the whole spring, uh, you know, just uh, really, you know, probably the transfers and the, and the the newcomers. I mean, I think we we have a good feel for the returning players. You know, they've yeah. all these guys back in the secondary. You know, we feel like we know what they've got there. We feel like we know, we know what they've got from uh, some of the linemen. Uh, but, you know, and, and some of the skill position guys and Jordan Travis wanting to see what he does. Uh, but really, I think the transfers at wide receiver is probably the biggest thing that everybody's going to be focused on. You know, can – you know, all four of those guys don't need to be stars, but if can they get one or two of those guys to be, you know, not elite wide receivers even, but just be ACC level starting wide receivers, uh, that's going to be a big thing to watch. And I think, you know, defensive line, the Jared Verse, the transfer uh, from uh, Albany mm -hmm. is a guy that everybody's going to want to see. So, you know, more now that we're into year three, now it's about focusing on the newcomers. You know, the last couple of years, it's been more focused on just, what is this Mike Norvell team going to look like? Now I think we're looking at new pieces of the puzzle. Yeah, I get it pumped up with the idea of, um, okay, we're, we're no longer kind of in neutral. Now you got to go, right? And these are the key pieces you're describing that are going to help make this go or not uh, based on what we learn in the spring, right? I think most people, I'll put it this way, as fans, most people are going to be nervous about the spring possibly in a good way, right? Maybe they, they find and they uncover something that's possible that has not been possible over these last two years, right? Now that you have viable receivers, perhaps, right? All of a sudden, you're like, okay, now we are set to take a huge leap forward. But if those guys don't look good at the spring IRA, everybody's going to be like, oh, my God, it's another year of this. I can't do it. I, you know, I, I got to think that the offense is going to look a lot better, you know, and it's hard to say, you know, sometimes in the spring, sometimes in preseason camp, you know, it's, you know, a lot of times maybe the defense has the advantage, but you know, what we've seen the last couple of years, really since Mike Norvell has been here and even going back before that a little bit, when you watch the receivers and the DBs go at it in practice, whether it's one-on-ones, whether it's seven on seven or 11 on 11, you know, the receivers just have such a hard time to such a degree where we felt like maybe the DBs were better than we thought they were, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and then we found out in the season, no, maybe they're not great, but it's what they're going up against in practice. You just want to see some, you know, I think that's going to be the focal point. They do bring in a couple of transfers on the offensive line. I think everybody's excited about Caden Lyles, the Wisconsin transfer on the offensive line, but I don't know that that's going to splash or make big flash plays for you, but right. seeing wide receivers beat man coverage I mean, it would just be, it would uh, be it's such so a long. Big deal. You hear the desperation in our voices, guys. You guys watching out there, you can hear it. He's like, imagine a receiver beats a defensive back. Maybe not even just once. It happens, like, let's say repeated. Uh, you know what conversation I hope we're having midway through our coverage of spring football? Mm -hmm. How bad is this defense? I want us to be talking about how the secondary can't get stops. It's unbelievable. They're throwing for 400 yards of practice. They cannot stop this receiving core. I want to have that conversation because I know that that's also not true, but it would be nice for once because all we ever do now is talk about how these defensive backs are studs. Wait till this season starts. Look at that group. That's the strength. They're not the strength. They're just going up against ass. <laughs> And well, and then we'll then we'll turn it around probably by week two or so. We'll get <laughs> bored with that, and then we'll be like. See, no pass rush without Jermaine Johnson. Jordan <laughs> Travis well, sitting back there all day just picking his defense apart. Yeah, well, no, that's true, too. Uh, all right, Ira, what will you be watching for the rest of this basketball season? Because the last we spoke, there were a couple of games still that we thought if Florida State could somehow find a way to muster to win, they would, they would remain in the conversation. Bottom line, what do you want to see from here? To me, the biggest thing is, can they keep this nucleus, the, you know, especially the young nucleus, together, invested, and bought into coming back? Because my only concern right now is, if I'm Leonard Hamilton, this coaching staff is 2023, and I feel like if you, you know, if you get Caleb Mills and Matthew Cleveland and John Butler 
and, and, and some of these guys, this group back again for next season, they could be, I mean, I think they could be one of the top 10 teams in the country. I mean, they're, t- they're those are legit NBA players and it would be, um, you know, just the sky's the limit for that team going into next season. What concerns me right now, and a lot of the questions I've been asking Leonard Hamilton is, you know, how are these younger younger guys handling this? Because again, if I'm a you know a guy that's only been here for a year, and this is this is not the Florida State program I signed with, you know, I, when I signed with Florida State, I'm thinking we're, we're automatic going to the Sweet 16. And right now, you're looking at probably not making the tournament. So to me, if I'm Leonard Hamilton and the staff. I'm focused on making sure that all those guys are bought in. Forget about even the NBA possibilities. That's going to happen or it's not going to happen. But just making sure that they all feel good about the future here. Because if they can keep that group together, I, mean, I really think 2023 could be a huge year. How do they uh, – it's going to be interesting what they do in the offseason, Ira, if we're talking about keeping some guys, but also the incoming class isn't the greatest that they've had. I mean, I, I'm not disparaging kids. We'll see. But, I mean, on they, paper, on paper. On, yeah, on paper, it's not a great class. I mean, I want, how does how is Leonard going to handle the NIL, potential transfers, getting guys, certain guys to have to leave this roster in order to make room because they don't necessarily have that? So I'm, I'm kind of curious your thoughts on how he would put all that together. Yeah, you know, I'm not 100% sure. I do think he made the comment the other day, and I haven't looked into all of the – uh, regulations post COVID mm-hmm. and the relief that they're getting there as far as scholarship goes. Um, you know, I get, he made the comment that um, I think he still thinks there would be relief for guys who came in, you know, who, 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 who stayed because they got that COVID year back. Okay. Um, so I think there's a feeling that if you kept a Malik Osborne, maybe it wouldn't throw your roster out of whack. Um, but, but again, I don't know if that's all, if that's just what he's hearing or if that's actually what's in place. But um, you know, man, I, I really just think that, you know, Leonard Hamilton He's not been the kind of coach that, you know, just sends guys packing and cuts guys loose. Of course not, no. But and, and because we've seen guys on, on this team the last few years who you would have thought he would have done that and he didn't do that. At the same time, you know, he knows the potential of this team and he, and he knows what he's got. I don't think there's any way he's going to uh, let any of those guys leave, any of those marquee guys leave if he wants them to stay. They can help him win because, you know, he's got a commitment to somebody else. So, uh, I, I have no doubt he'll work it out, and uh, you know I don't know how it's all going to work out in terms of how all the the pegs are going to fit in all the holes. But man, I, you know again, if he can keep this team intact, they they're going to be a lot of fun to watch next year. Thanks for checking out our video right here on Warchant TV. If you haven't done so yet, subscribe to Warchant TV and your homepage on the YouTube app or YouTube.com will populate with our coverage of Florida State football. Thank you for subscribing to our channel. Thank you for liking this video. Thank you so much for your support of Warchant TV.